Hey gang, Clay here at MME Mountain Music Exchange for a little how-to video on restringing your Fender Stratocaster guitar or similar S-series guitar with tremolo. <laughs> So before we get started, there are a few tools you're going to need. First off, you're going to need a string winder, so you'll be able to take down your strings a lot easier than just turning each peg over and over and over again. Uh, you'll need a screwdriver, not necessarily all the time. For this one, we're going to be using a screwdriver. I've already taken the back plate and uh, back screws off for posterity. There's something I want to talk about in there later. So I've done that for this, but you can see that there is a route here in the back plate. So you won't necessarily always have to take the back plate off or, or maybe even ever have to take the back plate off depending on your situation or if, whether you're changing string ga gauges or, or whatever. Um, and of course, last but not least, you will need a wire cutter, string snipper, whatever you want to call it. You can find these, of course, at your local hardware store, guitar kits, uh, so on and so forth. Just anything you can use to cut the tips of your strings off here. All right. And... Uh, Oh, of course, I forgot you'll need a tuner for the end of the trip here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is just take down all these strings at the same time. Um, you may have a different technique or you may find people that give you different ideas or, or techniques on what to do. But typically what I like to do is just go ahead and on an electric guitar, bring down all the strings at the same time. Okay, now I've got all the strings loosened up. What I'm gonna do now that I've got them all loosened up is I'm just gonna take them away from the peg right here. And you can see, you can just do that. Once you have enough tension relieved, you can just bring them right out. So I'm gonna do that a few more times now. Okay, so. I've got these loose, and in most situations, you shouldn't have any trouble just sort of pushing these through the back, and they will come out the back side of your tremolo system right here. But we still have the problem of we've got some curly cues at the end of our strings here because of the wrap around the peg head post. So what we're gonna do is just cut those with our handy dandy snips. Okay, now that we have all of these straightened out, what we're gonna do is just turn the guitar over. We're gonna push these out just a little bit so that the ball end of these strings comes through the backside. And once we've got enough room to just sort of grab a hold of those, we can just pull straight out and then we've got all six strings at once. You can then dispose of these strings, I suppose, as you please. You can recycle, you can throw them in the trash, you can make cool designs out of them. Actually, we know some folks here at the store that make a bunch of really cool different things out of the strings. So that might be something cool to think about later. Now, while I've got this back part exposed here, well, I have the plate off, the claw. Uh, now that I have that exposed and I've got your trim system exposed here, something real quick I wanted to talk about. Some people will come back into the store here uh, locally or, or sometimes even online when they've picked up a Stratocaster or some similar S style, or even a Floyd Rose guitar from us, something like that. And they will ask, I've changed the string gauge. Why is my guitar so out of whack? Well, when you change the gauge of your strings, you're actually allowing more pressure to pull this way so what you're doing is if you go up say from nines to tens or from tens to elevens or you know and it's more noticeable the higher jump that you go from string gauges for example if you go from nines to elevens or twelves you'll see that there's additional string pull on your tremolo 
and it'll pull upward. You won't be laying flat. Your action will probably be a little high. So a way to remedy that and resolve that, if you don't already know, is there is like a claw system back here. And the reason that this exists and these exist here is to balance the tension between the strings and the springs here. So if you have a heavier gauge string that you want to put on, but you need that, that balance to even out, you're gonna wanna just tighten these up here just as much as you need to to compensate. We don't really need to do much tightening here because we're just changing from nines to nines. You'll just wanna tighten these up and as you tighten these up, you'll have additional spring pull coming from this way to bring your tremolo back down to a level. And it'll take a little bit of trial and error, especially at first if you're not used to it, but you'll be pulling that backwards. You can also, of course, add additional springs here. A lot of people use five springs to either just block the tremolo or make it a little tougher so it doesn't float quite as much. So there are a couple different things you can do to sort of compensate for a higher string gauge, but don't forget or don't sleep on using this claw. That will be your ticket to good action, good playability with a string change, adjusting for a different gauge. And of course the inverse is true as well. If you're going from 11s, you wanna come back down to nines, you're gonna to have to loosen that up to make that tension balance out. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead now and change into our new Kurt Mangan nickel wound electric guitar 9 to 42 Mountain Music Exchange specials here. Big shout out to Kurt Mangan making cool strings. And he's actually the guy you talk to when you do that, so it's pretty cool really. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn this guitar back over and I'm gonna start at nine, which should be, yes, here. I'm gonna start at nine, just work my way over. And I'm gonna just put just enough through so that I can bring the entire string through the other side. Once I turn it over, I'm gonna to try to do all these at once and I'm gonna also double try to make sure there we go, there we go. Try to get just enough through here so that I don't have any trouble pulling all the strings through at the same time. And then we're just gonna find the trick in not scratching the guitar all to pieces. Do you think we can find that trick? I don't know, but we're gonna know very shortly. Okay, I have every string through here. So now what I'm gonna try to do is just push all of these through until we get the ball to stop at the trim end here. I'm gonna bring the guitar over and around. I'm just gonna go with you, give these a little bit of a pull here. Uh oh We got a wild one here, it looks like. There we go. Don't be shy, buddy. It's okay. I'm just going to feed him right on through there. Come on. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. There we go. Okay. So, we're going to leave these strings sort of swooped over this way. You can tell they're not touching the body and we want to avoid touching the body with these as much as possible, although I'm not gonna tell you that that's impossible or that I'm gonna accomplish that here today. But we're gonna just bring these on through one at a time. And what we're gonna start by doing is just bringing it on through and then get a couple of good winds out of this. Now there are varying degrees and philosophies on how much slack to leave, how much wind you should have on your string and I don't subscribe to a whole lot of those. I'm more of the mind that as long as you can get a couple of good wraps on each peg, that you'll get the vibrations that you need to make the guitar sort of breathe and you'll get 
enough contact to do the things that you want to do. Plus, that also allows you to, with a couple of wines, it allows you to tune up, tune down, if you need to on the fly for a spot. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring all these through now and do that same sort of process five more times. What I just did was I left a little bit of slack in each string so we could get enough extra string to get a couple to three good wines out of each of those. Again, your mileage may vary. You may have a different technique. If you do, let us know in the comments below. We'll be happy to check that out and uh, take it under advisement. But we left a little slack. We left a good two or three wines in each one. And as I was stringing each one of these up, you're not necessarily gonna tune them all together right off, but I just bring them to tension so that we don't lose anything off of that. Now that we've got our giant spider legs here exposed and dangerously close to my eyes for the last little bit, I'm going to go and snip those using our handy dandy snippers one more time. Now we have a clean headstock with no wiry string ends hanging off of it. The last thing we are gonna have to do with this before we put the back plate back on is tune it up. And I'm gonna use this little Fender bullet tuner, which is extremely handy and quite dandy for its size. So I'm just gonna turn that on and you'll tune these up one at a time. And then there's a specific technique I use with Stratocasters or Floyd Rose guitars that we'll talk about in just a minute. Okay, so I've tuned to standard tuning, which is E, A, D, G, B, E. But what I'm gonna do now is go back and do a little bit of fine tuning. And the reason I'm gonna do that fine tuning, with any tremolo equipped guitar system, as you tune, we'll say, the A string, you're gonna be pulling on that E string. When you tune the D string, you're gonna be pulling on the A and the E string, so on and so forth. And what you're doing is you're just kind of throwing the guitar out of tune just by virtue of creating tension on the tremolo, it pulls up just a little bit. So we're gonna go back and just fine tune that now. And you can see here, well you may not be able to see, but now my E is tuned all the way down to D. So we just gotta go back and do a little bit of work to straighten that up. Now we're all tuned up and the only thing left is to put the back plate on. So, we're going to do that right now, and that will have us. And that's got us. We have a fresh set of strings. We can get off to a fresh start and get out there and do some rocking and rolling. So with that being said, gang, check us out online at mountainmusicexchange.com. Uh, be sure, by the way, if you want more content like this, we have uh, stuff like this reviews, uh, antics and goings on, all kinds of cool stuff here on the YouTube page. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button before you leave here today. And uh, check us out also on Instagram at Mountain Music Exchange. Check us out online on Facebook at Mountain Music Exchange and at mountainmusicexchange.com where you can get free shipping on orders over $49. So that's it with the tutorial today, gang. Thank you very much. I'm Clay. You rock. Have a good one.